Coming up on Tiger News, we'll learn about people who are shedding a positive light in Memphis. And also, we'll have an exclusive insight look at a local home with a unique teaching technique. Good morning and welcome to Tiger News. I'm Tierra Perry. And I'm Taylor Mean. Thank you for joining us. A restaurant and community center is saying goodbye to its owner of 10 years. Ani Johns, owner of Caritas Village in the Binghampton community, started the place in hopes of creating a safe environment where all feel welcome. After sending 100 letters, she received $38,000 in a five-year-old van. And from there, her dream became a reality. Caritas Village restaurant policy is a bit different than most because everyone gets to eat. About 25 free meals are given away each week to those in need. Caritas also has a new art exhibit on display. This partners with the Latino multicultural community and together they offer an art class. But throughout the week, the village offers other programs for the community as well, ranging from yoga, a free health clinic, every Tuesday art classes and music classes. Caritas operates with the help of volunteers there are only four paid staff members at all times. The Memphis Grizzlies are one of the most active teams in the NBA with the community. They host a variety of events that benefit St. Jude Research Hospital, Memphis Grizzlies House, and a variety of other community organizations in Memphis. The Grizz host the Grizz Gala canned food and tip off luncheons that benefit different charities throughout the city, as well as each, each player and coach has their own event they host to benefit the city and certain charities. The Memphis Grizzlies has been honored several times throughout the years for their community involvement. For more information on how you can get involved with Grizzlies community outreach, go to www.nba.com slash grizzlies slash community. University of Memphis custodial workers do not have the same privileges as others on campus. Custodial workers as well as maintenance workers are not granted free parking. Parking spaces cost $7 per day for each worker, whereas many faculty and staff are allowed to park for free. Custodial workers also don't have free membership to the Campus Recreation Center like the students and most faculty members do. When we come back, we'll get some motivation from a local minister who beat the odds. Well, Thomas, you've got pre-diabetes, but with more exercise and a change in diet, it can be reversed. I've tried exercising. It, it just makes me hungry for bacon. I love bacon, too. And who really likes to exercise? Not me. <laughs> me neither. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're good? What? Oh, you still have prediabetes. Big time. Hey, look, it's those guys. Get some drinks. Uh, Are you good to drive? I'm fine. How many did you have? I should be fine. You should be. Go and step out of the vehicle for me. See ya, buddy. Good luck. So it turns out, buzz driving and drunk driving, they're the same thing. And it costs around $10,000. So not worth it. Calls me googly eyes. And you know you're beautiful, right? You know Even you are beautiful. I got bullied for wearing glasses. Share if you're against bullying. We put it out there, just took off. Three million people have shared this post. <laughs> Don't let bullies get you down. I stand with you. <laughs> My whole family's wearing glasses. Yay. I wear glasses and I'm proud. I even have the army on my team. All the kind comments brought my child joy. I don't feel thank you is enough. That was Let's meet one guy who has a passion for children and empowerment. Our reporter Sandra Nash has an exclusive interview with Christopher Broom. 
I'm Sandra Nash here today speaking with Christopher Broom, um, a new motivational speaker and director of Yes Summer Camp. You're motivating parents and students. So, like, if if I was in the audience that wanted these seminars, what's some of the things I would hear? Oh, you would hear some things such as uh, you have the power to 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 change your life, the course that you wanted to go. So, all right. I need you guys to repeat after me. Dream big. Dream big. You're not ready. Ho, ho. Wait, wait a minute. Dream big. Dream big. No, no. I need you to say it like you meant. I need you to say it passionately like you really got dreams you want to follow after. Dream, dream big. Dream big. There we go. Think big. Think big. Act big. Act big. Give it to me. About. Summer camp came about for several reasons. One, I wanted a place where children can come during the summer so that they can have a bridge between the previous school year and the upcoming school year. That's first. Second of all, I wanted a place where I could have my complete and total influence to be able to motivate children to follow their dreams to do academic enrichment in both language, arts, and math. Now the curriculum, I don't set up. I usually leave that to uh, our teachers who come from Shelby County School. Hey, Chris, I just wanted to know, what was the um, the last impression that you want to leave viewers with about who Christopher Broom is? Uh, the last impression that I would like for our viewers to know is that uh, you don't have to be what your environment tells you that you should be. Uh, I was told that I was going to end up in jail. Uh, I grew up in a fatherless home. The first time I saw my father, he asked me for money to get drunk. The second time I saw my father, he was in the hospital because he had drunk his kidneys or his, you know, his he drunk his kidneys to failure. Third time I saw my father was in a uh, casket. And so you don't have to be what your environment tells you you should be. Uh, no one would ever would have thought, even people I went to high school with, they find it hard to believe that I'm a preacher now. They find it hard to believe that I'm a motivational speaker doing the very thing that that I never thought I would do, and that's motivating children. You got to think I'm a former class clown. You have to think I'm, I was like, out of 465, I was number 450 in my graduating class. Had a GPA of 0 0.6. Um, single parent home. Broke. Grew up in South Memphis where rats and mice were your friends. And so you don't have to be what your environment tells you, you you need to be or you are going to be. You can make up your mind that I was created for better, I'm going for better, whether if it kills me or not, and that's all I want people to know. The system can't stop you, your, your, your environment can't stop you, whoever, whoever else you have given power to, to say that you can't make it, they can't stop you. Only you can do it. Circumstances, as long as you believe in yourself and your ability to do it. All right, and that's it. Well, Mr. Christopher Broom, thank you. The University of Memphis is a thriving campus, stretching over approximately 1,600 acres of land with about 239 buildings. The U of M has been chosen by over 20,000 students as the place to obtain a higher education. But what makes the school so successful? As a whole, there are many aspects that keep the U of M up and running. The students serving as aides at the information desk in the UC. The librarians ensuring you find all that you need to study and pass your classes. The professor constantly pushing you to be all that you can be. And let us not forget the many men and women who ensure that we eat while we are here. But what about the ones we overlook? Would our campus be what it is without the men who ensure that our campus remains clean and eye-catching to all that pass by? Will we be as willing to call the U of M our home if it were not though for those men and women who ensure that the places we choose to sit and eat as well as the bathrooms are clean? The groundkeepers, plant workers, and custodians work day in and day out to ensure that we are only presented with the best of conditions and they are yet to the most overlooked. Some workers, some workers we spoke to say their frustration but don't want to speak out for the fear of losing their jobs. There are some things you can do to make sure their work easier. For example, for example, clean up after yourself. Don't throw trash in the bathroom and break rooms. And keep the grounds clean by not littering. 
we must remember it is the little things that make the greatest difference. When we come back, we'll find out how one pastor is giving back to his community. She doesn't really think she's going to get out of here, does she? Be nice. She's new. Hello, is anyone there? Ooh. Wow. Even from our standards, you look awful. Oh, sweetie, what happened? Me? My friend Becky got to talk to this super cute boy, and I tried to act like I wasn't jealous, but I so totally was. And then out of nowhere, this concrete barrier just popped up. Maybe it was a semi. You mean you were driving? Yeah. I mean, I know the whole eyes on the road thing, but this was a super important text. Maybe you have to know, Becky. You're texting? Great. But I, it was only like five seconds, and I'm a really, really fast texter, so it wasn't even a big deal. Actually, has she texted me back yet? Wow, I get like no bars in this place. I wonder if they have Wi-Fi here. They say that when you're facing extreme danger, your life flashes before you. If you think that's sad, consider facing it before you even have enough life to flash before your eyes. Car crashes are a leading killer of children 1 to 13. Deaths and injuries can be prevented by using the right car seat. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat to know what is appropriate for each age and size. Phil, home of the Stax Museum and Stax Music Academy, is now home to radio show, Tell Me More. The show was starred by Hollywood producer Tom Shadiak, along with his lifelong friend, Harold Mintz. Mintz left his family behind, packed his suitcase, and moved to Memphis, Tennessee. Living downtown, Mintz followed Shadiak on a mission to positively impact the Phillipsville community. Mintz donated a kidney to an Ethiopian refugee who was on the transplant list for 12 years. His philanthropic nature arose when his father passed away from cancer. So it's no surprise when his friend asked him to come help a struggling community get on its feet. The show airs Monday through Friday on KOM 990 at 6.06 p.m. Members of one community say that it's time for a change. The J.E. Smith Outreach Program offers the youth of Fraser skill training in areas such as graphic design and printing, music and TV production, sewing and much more. Pastor Charlie Caswell of Union Grove Baptist Church is the head of the program and had plenty to say about it. Uh, my name is Charlie Caswell, and, and I'm and my role as pastor and uh, chief operating officer of the uh, James E. Smith Community Development Corporation. We have here a, a church that has a long history in this community, the former pastor uh, being some 40 years as an activist. My role here now as the pastor and as the CEO of the, the James E. Smith is to, we have a two part of our mission is working with veterans and youth in the community. We have a veteran housing that we house some 12 veterans that was homeless. We put them into apartments and help them with wraparound services around social issues. At the same time, we have a youth and after school program and summer program that work with youth. Uh, it's called the 3V Leader Leadership and Entrepreneurship Academy. Uh, and that, that is all the time. That, organ, that component of the work that we do work with uh, target youth, uh, at risk youth, some that have been identified through the GRASI program, which is the, the gang intervention program that's inside of Tresman High School. And that is all the time we have today. Thank you for joining us on this edition of Tiger News. Have a great day.